Hi there, so we're gonna look at how to make a Padlet. A Padlet is a great place to have a digital collection. It works great if your kids are meeting on Google Meet or if you need a place to put links and pictures um, and a link to a place like that where you can continually add and change, have students add, take away. That uh, link doesn't change, but the content in there is easily changeable. So to make a Padlet, once you've had an account, uh, with a new account, you'll get uh, two or three free Padlets. You will click Make a Padlet. And then you will choose the different type of Padlet that you would like. There's different setups. Um, we're just going to go with a traditional wall Padlet. And so we're going to click here. And then it auto populates. So then you can make lots of changes there. So I am going to call this one Warren Peers School and Community, a project that we're working on. Um, it's also good to type instructions about how to use the Padlet or what people are supposed to do. Um, do they make a post by clicking the plus in the bottom right hand corner? Uh, do you want them to go through and like a post, read three posts and make two comments? What what do you want your readers to do there? Uh, we can pick an icon. We'll go with this one. Okay. And then we can change uh, lots of different things. Now, this part is what I really want us to get to, is we can make the Padlet specific. So in this case... If I wanted to, you'll see it's padlet.com and Mrs. Kanikins is my username. So that's kind of my unique address. But then I can do much better at making this easy to find. I could type in here WPS, which is um, going to stand for Warren Pierce School. So as long as I don't have any other padlets that are named WPS in my collection, that is going to be the link and it's going to be easy to remember. So I can go in here now and I can pick all sorts of different pictures. We'll just make this one kind of a colored one. I could add something on my own. So this is a picture of a school. I could go in and I could actually add a school picture, uh, which is nice. I've got a playground picture with swings that I'm thinking of that would be lovely there. And I can decide whether or not we want comments. Um, we can decide whether or not we want the author's attribution above each post. So if most of your users are going to be anonymous, you don't really need that. You can change fonts and colors and some other things. Um, you can, as a safety mechanism, if you need, have items require approval. And you can also put a, a, a profanity filter in place. So if you're using uh, with students for the first time, you might want to require approval just so that you know that everything that's posted there is going to be all good. I'm going to click next. And so now we can start posting. So in order to post, uh, anybody would come down here and click this uh, pink plus. And because I'm the owner, I can also edit down there. I also want to take a look at the share settings. So this will be uh, important for you. There's a number of ways that you can copy or share this Padlet. One will be with just a link. So if you copy the link to the clipboard, it's going to copy this link, and then you can post it in your Google Classroom. You can pop that link into your Google Meet, which is one of my favorite things to do because then kids can post on here, um, and they can post anything. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a quick second. So you can see all the different places. Actually, there is a share to Google Classroom um, direct image at the end. You can save all of the student work as a PDF. If there's lots, that's the way to go. If it's a smaller uh, collection, you can save it as an image. So there are some ways that you can um, save the content and then reuse the post or the site, especially if you want to stick within your three free items. So those are some little hacks that we can do there. To create a post, students are going to click on the plus. And then I like to have kids um, type their name in here just so that uh, they don't need an account, but they can be identified. And then here's the lovely thing about Padlet. We can upload from our desktop. Uh, we can add any link. So this is a great way to have uh, kids collect research if they want. Uh, you can take a, a picture and also a video and then look at the magic that happens here. 
Um, this is what makes Padlet so powerful. So we have all these ones we just talked about. Uh, you can take a photo. You can take a video right from within Padlet. You don't need to make it anywhere else and upload it. When you click the film button, there's a record and it goes. Same thing with voice. The recorder is built right in. You just click play, uh, click record and it records from within Padlet. So another reason that it's so powerful, it has a screen recorder. Uh, it has a nice doodle function, which allows you to actually uh, gives you a little canvas and oh, we have to look at this one. this one's so cool uh, so you can actually get a little canvas and you can draw so you can imagine that you can even do math with kids you can do all sorts of things here um, and you can change the background from black to white so kind of like that uh, blackboard feature in Flipgrid if you've used that a little bit and there are all sorts you can see my canvas there of other great things that students can do so Padlet is super um, practical. Uh, again, one of the ways that we will be using it in our Warren Pierce School project is we will be creating slide decks for a Kids Guide to Canada project, and then we will be uploading those into here as a library so that when people come to learn more about Acadia Valley and our school, they can click all of our slide decks, which we can continue to edit. We can continue to upload so once I post this one link to the Kids Guide to Canada map, I can keep changing things in my Padlet and we can keep planning and going without having to actually change the website.